Service to the people is often touted as a watchword in describing the role of a politician in society. But beyond the job description, there are some politicians who embody the belief that service is the most important function of a politician. Margaret Olive Hector was such a person. She was born to serve. The constituency of Diggle Martin West has always been one of the prominent parliamentary seats in the electoral boundaries of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Relatively, the Member of Parliament representing this area over the decades has consistently been high profile. Former parliamentarian Margaret Hector, who was the MP for Diggle Martin West from the years 1986 to 1991 during the National Alliance for Reconstruction Administration, went against the norm. Based on her philosophy of service to the people, being part of her lifestyle, Margaret Hector placed what she saw as her duties before the importance of where she was placed geographically in the hierarchy of an electoral constituency map. Margaret, I believe, was a person that was very much committed to the, the underclass of the society. She spent a great deal of time and she had a passion for the poor in the society. And that is something that I have, I have a great deal of respect for. I had a great deal of respect for her in view of the work that she did among the poorer classes of people in, in the society. And I think for that, we need to remember the type of work she did, uh, the type of person she was. And it was very interesting, I think, for her to be able to work through the political system and become a member of parliament. Born on August 16, 1950, to Arthur and Olga Coltest, and growing up in Coronage, Margaret Hector attended the St. Joseph's Convent, Port of Spain, and after graduation, supplemented her education at the Institute of Vocational Arts. But her real vocation was service to the people, whom she encountered as a community activist and advocate for social causes. Realizing that advocacy could only be strengthened through an engagement in active party politics, Margaret joined the Youth League of the People's National Movement Party. However, her allegiances would change over the years, and by 1981, she appeared on a campaign platform of the Organization for National Reconstruction Political Party, which was contesting the general election of that year. I remember it like yesterday. We were at a political meeting, or in our ONR political meeting in 1981. Mommy was pregnant with my little sister Carla, and the featured speaker, one of the featured speaker, a woman, did not show up. And my mom was just there, and they asked her if she would like to speak. She wasn't prepared. Um, this whole ONR thing was kind of new to us, but we were, we were watching the scenes and stuff, and she was kind of like talking to my dad and asking, What should I do? And me being the pushy little nine year old, I said, Mommy, you need to do this. You need to do this for us. And that's how it all began. And I think she had a good impact on the crowd. She was introduced to Mr. Carlos and Philip. And then from then on, it was one meeting after the next, after the next, all over Trinidad and Tobago. The ONR did not secure a single seat at the polls in 1981, but Margaret continued in her new passion of active politics and by 1983 was the local government candidate for the ONR contesting the Shagaramas Point Kamana electoral district. Three years later, as the ONR merged into the National Alliance for Reconstruction through a coalition of political parties, Margaret once again faced the electorate and by this time, success at the December 1986 general election. Well, she was uh, an activist with the PNM in her teenage years and um, people like Hugh Francis, who incidentally she beat in the elections of 86. They were friends and, and colleagues in the PNM Youth League, so she came up from that. But I think during the, the, the early 80s, like a lot of Trinidadians, she became very disenchanted, was looking for an option, and then the ONR at the time came on the scene. She, um, after that, after 1981, she, well, just as a speaker, 83, when we had the accommodation, which was the arrangement between the ONR and the, and the ULF at the time, it wasn't a formal arrangement, but just an accommodation, not to contest same seats, um, she went up for the Point Kamala area, she went up against Mr. James Lambert and she did not win. Then 1986, she went up again 
and uh, she was very successful in the Diego Martin constituency. And to date, which is 2010, she's the only non-PNM representative for the Diego Martin West constituency in Parliament. And I think that's a great feat. With NAR sweeping the polls with a 33-3 seat electoral victory, Margaret became the Honourable Margaret Hector and was appointed as the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Welfare and the Status of Women. By the following year, November 1987, Margaret Hector was promoted to the position as a minister in the office of the Prime Minister. Meanwhile, at the political party level, she was also active as the Women's Affairs Officer in the National Bureau of the NAR. Even though she did not um, belong to the cabinet, whenever we had like parliamentary caucuses, for example, uh, on, a, on a Wednesday evening or whatever it is, when we were preparing for debate on a Friday, she would ensure that um, she spoke out on behalf of the less fortunate, on behalf of the poor. That was her, that was her call, that was always her call, you know. Um, the, the, the less fortunate, the Baptist community, you know, um, people who can't cope uh, with, 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 with the, 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 the matters of life, you know. People who just can't cope, people who are uh, having difficulties, you know, social strains, you know, family life, you know, drug addicts, you know. Uh, people who uh, drop out, you know. She had a special way of making their point, you know. Throughout the NAR's five-year term in office, Minister Hector also acted as Minister of Health during the absence from the country of substantive health minister Dr. Emmanuel Hossein. In Parliament, Minister Hector was appointed a member of the Privileges Committee, one of the many committees governing the affairs of the Parliament. Margaret was an activist, so she was out, and she was a community person, and therefore the constraints of government and the limitations uh, with respect to how much she could have helped certainly, I, I think, took a, a toll on her because she wanted to do so much for not merely the community she was most familiar with, let's say, in the Digo Martin car in Algeria, but throughout the country. And when you have that kind of commitment and that kind of passion, it is very difficult to be constrained by you know, the, the, the exercise of power and all the rules and regulations that needs to be followed. Throughout her life, Margaret Hector had many achievements to mark her distinguished service and devotion to community activities. She was awarded for her community and social service activism by the Bustamante Institute of Jamaica. She was vice president of the Caribbean Women for Democracy group chairman of the National Organization for Women and ex-officio member of the Trinidad and Tobago Girl Guides Association, a community development tutor, a founding member of the Lansmitan Action Group, among others. In addition to her political career and interests in community and social activities, Margaret Hector was also a deeply religious practitioner of the spiritual Baptist faith. I think it was her, 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 well I wouldn't want to use the word fight, but it was her, her approach to ensuring that the Baptist community um, be placed on the same footing as the other religion. Because you know, there was a time in this country, and probably still is, where people view the Baptist faith as not on the same level as say the Hindu faith or the Muslim faith or the Catholic faith or the Anglican faith or the Pentecostal faith. And she told all and sundry that she belonged to the Baptist community. She wore her head ties and she ensured that, well, listen, I'm a Baptist, accept me as a Baptist, take me as a Baptist and let us move on. Married to Refford Hector, Margaret Hector had five children two girls, two boys, and an adopted girl. Her daughter, Avenel, today follows in her mother's footsteps. Oh, definitely I'm going to be the future Prime Minister of Trinidad one day. I wanted to be the first um, woman um, Prime Minister. There's the immutable law of marketing. If you can't be first, then there'll be second, create a new category. So there's going to be a first woman Prime Minister, so I guess I'll be the first Afro-Trinidadian female Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> and the youngest something, create a category, but definitely politics, we must, I believe we must be a part of the process of change. On April 15, 2003, Margaret Hector left her life of service on earth and
and to the people of her beloved constituency of Diego Martin West. Extending condolences on behalf of the government, the then MP for Diego Martin West, the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, then Minister of Planning and Development, described her as someone who was referred to as the salt of the earth. What made my mother an exceptional politician because we came out of poverty. So poverty was not some fairy poetic thing that she had to deal with. It was something that she can identify with. And she knew how important it was for us as children to be able to have a proper meal at school. So she, could, she was touched with the feelings of the mother who didn't have something to put in their child's lunch kit. And those were the things that she did that made her connected. And I think that's the policy that we need. People who have heart and soul, it's not just a profession, it's a vocation. I think she will want to be remembered as a person who helped, simply. As a person who assisted. As a person who, <coughs> when given a portfolio, um, a government portfolio, did not turn her back on those who put her there, especially the less fortunate. You know, politicians have a tendency of sometimes when they get into office, forgetting their roots, where they came from, and forgetting that they have been elected to serve. You know, I don't think Margaret Hector was that type of person. I think she was a person who understood clearly her oath, her oath of service to the people, and brother, did she serve. Margaret Hector would have been pleased with this identification. In all spheres of her life, she connected to people and was content that her path led her to serve as a parliamentarian in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Margaret Olive Hector, born to serve. Yes,